Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here and thank you very much for tuning in today and you'll be glad you did because I'm going to do a walk around with my new to me 2003 Honda Pilot. Yes, if you've seen the video that I posted recently on ETCG1, you know that, well, SUVs aren't my favorite vehicles. So why did I purchase this? Well, before the end of this video, I will tell you why I purchased it and maybe you'll agree with me, maybe you won't, but stay tuned. Let's find out what's going on with this pilot. Let's start with a walk around, but I'm gonna do it different this time. I'm gonna start in the back and work my way to the front. There's very little rust on this Pilot. In fact, there's a little bit here on the left rear quarter, but a few like little dings and things like that. I can't remember the mileage, but I'll tell you in a minute once we get inside, but it is a Pilot EX. And the previous owner, well, maybe they decided to set the thing on fire because, well, there's a gas can and a lighter sitting here in the back. And those of you that follow me on social media might recognize this pilot. This is actually Jennifer's pilot, the one I gave the Fixing It Forward Odyssey to. Well, I decided to purchase it from her and I paid 1500 for it, but she ended up paying some money for a tow, so I gave her an extra 100 All told, I have $1,600 into this Honda Pilot. I know it has a transmission issue and well, it needs a transmission which we'll go over before we're done. But anyway, uh, it looks like this rear seat is having an issue and will no longer fold down and looks like somebody might have gotten in here <laughs> to try and address that. We'll get to that at some point. Let's see, uh, the jack and tools are still in place. I like to see that but the spare tire is missing as we'll see here in a minute. That's what it's like back here. It does have a trailer hitch installed. These vehicles, I believe were rated for like 3,500 pounds as far as the uh, towing capability. The tires, all four of them are new, but I believe these are like Walmart specials. Doesn't matter, they are literally brand new. Back seat, well, I got a, a nice truck to play with, which I think is cool. It's always nice to get toys when you buy something. Um, a rag, <laughs> for what, I don't know. But it's, you know, it's rough. But I knew that. And it's not often you can purchase an SUV for, you know, $1,500, $1,600, so eh, it is what it is. And the uh, entire panel, the, there's supposed to be some other stuff on top of this, some fabric, that's missing. Once again, I don't care, but all the windows roll down, which is nice. Um, up here, more of the same with that fabric that's come away. It's definitely showing some signs of use and mileage as far as that's concerned. Cloth seats, CD player and tape player. Wow, that's fancy, right? Dollars to donuts. They didn't clean the rims when they installed these new tires, and that's why this one's low. That's one thing that bothers me in a big way is whenever people do that, I just, I get so annoyed with that because it causes these slow leaks and drives customers insane. You really need to be sure that you clean wheels before you mount new tires. If not, you get this and bead sealer is not a solution. Coming around the front, it's more of the same. The left headlights, all right. But as usual, the vehicles of this vintage, we're looking at, yes, foggy headlights, bug deflector, that has seen a better day. Let's look under the hood. The hood prop was in the back. You might've seen it earlier. We're missing the upper engine cover, but I believe this is a 3.5 liter. No VCM on this guy. No, all six cylinders work all the time. Uh, but you see on this one, there's something a little bit different. You might notice this spacer underneath the intake. That will help improve torque, longer intake runners. I actually did a video about this. It looks like it's due for some service kind of stuff. Uh, the, maybe the timing belt, water pump, spark plugs, uh, you know, that type of thing. I already mentioned the transmission, but as long as we're here, why don't we check the fluid? And well, it looks like there's fluid in it and it is at the proper level. I didn't warm it up. You're supposed to warm it up first, but you do check this fluid with the engine off. It might have even been flush recently. It looks pretty clean for what it is. Maybe somebody made an attempt to try to fix it. Only run Honda fluid and Honda automatic transmissions is what I recommend. And look, it's the battery terminals I hate. Why are these on every vehicle I get these days? Freaking hate these things, hate them. Looks like somebody installed a transmission cooler on this, uh, perhaps to help with towing. They did a nice zip tie job on it. 
Looks like they also left the uh, brake light thing unplugged. Not sure why they did that, if there's a reason for it or not. Here we are in the driver's seat and the mileage is 209,113. And as I mentioned, there's a check engine light. And the codes for that light are as follows. We got a P0113 for an intake air temperature circuit high. That gets left unplugged, I'm not worried about that. Uh, we have a P0740, which I used to work at the Acura dealer from 1997 to 2007. And the bulk of the work that I did there, well, that was putting transmissions in Acura TLs. Two, sometimes three of them a day. Anyway, this code almost always went with a bad transmission. So I'm fairly certain that this uh, needs a transmission. Also a P0730, uh, especially this one, the 730, the gear ratio incorrect. You can go and play around with solenoids and screens all you want. You might get lucky and that'd be a great place to start, but I'm pretty much resigned to put a transmission in this thing. It has neat little features, sort of as this extra cup holder. So like if you want super drinks here, if one drink is not enough, four can be better. Also this massive chasm underneath here to store stuff, uh, stuff you can store in the armrest. And there's also down in here, I don't know if you can see it, but power outlet down in there. And these are equipped with Honda's uh, VTM4 system, which is, I believe, vehicle traction management or something. I, I don't remember exactly what that means. Now let's put it up in the air and get a look at the undercarriage. I don't see any oil leaks, like none, none at all. This is pretty darn clean underneath here. And this is a cooler hookup. And I'm gonna say they kind of screwed up because what you wanna do in these situations is you wanna utilize the radiator's uh, cooler. So I would run it through the radiator first and then out to the external cooler to get the most cooling I possibly could. I believe there's supposed to be a splash shield here that's, that's not. Um, it looks like this engine mount either has oil on it or it's possibly bad, hard to say. But surprisingly for the mileage, like zero oil leaks, zero. That is encouraging. Um, other than this one on the side of the transmission, I don't know really how relevant that is. But anyhow, the axles look good. I feel something, oh yeah, that ball joint's wasted. So it'll need one of those for sure. And probably this one also, that one's got a cracked boot. So lower ball joints in its future. Looks like there's been some exhaust work that was done, something welded in here. It still has what I believe to be an OE converter on it. So I'm gonna see what I can do to lock that thing down. In fact, I've been parking it inside ever since I've gotten it, uh, just for that reason. I have concerns about catalytic converters going missing out in front of my shop. See previous videos. Looks like this stabilizer bar or stabilizer link on this side, the boot is all wasted on that side. Um, this side looks old, but not wasted. Neither one of the front struts are leaking, which is nice. Looks like there is a little bit of an oil leak around that oil pressure switch, around where the VTEC stuff is, but that's about it. Um, maybe that inner CV boot also. Surprisingly, very few leaks under here. It's got rear air conditioning and this is where it comes in. Doesn't look like I see any collision damage or any significant corrosion. Here's a little bit here, but nothing that's rusted through. Same over here. This typical rust for something that's been around this long. But no, it doesn't look like, well, maybe this damper is starting to leak a little bit back here. So that might be something to consider. This side looks dry though. The uh, rear differential looks like it has a leak over on this side, over here. Maybe that axle seal is leaking. The bushings on the control arms look okay. Looks like that rear stabilizer bar right there is also the boot on that is kind of gone. I don't know if that means that the joint is also bad. You know, if you look at this, or pilots are built on Odyssey platforms. And if you look back here and compare it to like what an Odyssey is, it's like an Odyssey with a lift kit. Other than they put a spare tire back here, whereas in the Odyssey they've got, this is where the rear seats sort of live. But this is where the rust is at. A little sad I don't have a spare tire, but you know, it is what it is. 
Ah, classic Honda of this vintage. Rear bumper is wasted. Totally wasted. And they uh, didn't even bother to bolt down the uh, tow hitch back here completely. So we're probably gonna lose the tow hitch, if I'm honest, because what it's bolting to, oh yeah, that's also quite ugly. So the, everything is like, oh, they saved it for the end. Everything is all back here. It should look more like this. But yeah, I, uh, I don't know if this is gonna stick around. Looks like somebody didn't bother to plug this off. Well, maybe they did and it just fell out. <laughs> Anyhow, it looks like this is where my, my rust is that we'll have to deal with. Otherwise, not too bad. Here's something interesting. Brand new tires. I'm guessing they opted to skip the alignment because look at these bolts. And we know about these bolts and these lower control arms on Hondas. And if you don't, you need to watch more of my videos because I've done a few of them at this point. Anyway, um, I'm gonna say rear lower control arms, bolts, and probably coil springs. And if I can find them <laughs> that aren't Moog parts, if it's at all possible, I'm gonna go for the uh, upper control arms in the rear that are adjustable here so that I can get this thing aligned properly. But otherwise, it doesn't look too bad back here, uh, except for the rust. Yeah, you can really feel that ball joint. That's solid. Also solid. Oh, wow. <laughs> to say these ball joints are unsafe, that's an underestimate. <laughs> that's about to go. Looks like I spoke too soon on these front struts. They are damp. At least this right front one is. Yeah, looking at it, the left front is too. So, some struts in its future. Definitely some ball joints. Let's get the wheels off and have a look. These front brakes are new. Uh, I don't really see anything else too terribly exciting here. The brake hoses look good. Uh, that bushing in the back there looks a bit stressed. This is what I'm thinking about doing when it comes time to do the transmission. Similar to what I did with the Odyssey engine, I'm thinking about dropping everything out the bottom. When I do, those uh, control arms will be accessible. And I'm thinking I might just replace both the rear and the front uh, bushings just to be done with all that. Almost this looks weird down here. I'm not sure why this metal looks like this. It almost seems like they should be together, but I could be wrong. Well, it looks like that over here too. All right, but I also have one of those stress bushings as well. And the brakes are new. Missing rotor screws, thanks a lot, but I can scrounge up some of those. I know I'm weird, I like those. I like the rotor screws. They help me, they help me sleep at night. I don't know why. Otherwise, there's not a whole lot else that's up here. The tie rod ends seemed okay, so I think those are about the only things up here that I won't have to mess with. Well, and the front brakes. In the back, these brakes are older and they spin okay. Uh, they don't seem now. These, there's still plenty of friction material left, although these rotors don't look great. But as mentioned, I would like to get adjustable upper control arms back here so you can do a camber adjustment. I think that would be nice. And finally over here, these brake pads also, there's a finger's worth so those are fairly new it looks like back here might have been pad slapped fairly recently and by pad slapped i mean they just put brake pads on didn't do anything with rotors or any of that i'm not going to take the rotor off and inspect the parking brake assembly i'll do that later when i do stuff with the brakes the top of this damper looks pretty crusty though and this is a closer look at that stabilizer link that i mentioned if there's a clunk going over bumps but you can definitely see how that boot is torn and at almost 210,000 miles well it's to be expected that you see some wear and tear i wasn't kidding when i said they zip tied this cooler transmission cooler into here i mean it's literally just hanging there on top of the power steering cooler line and rubbing against the ac condenser that is gonna have to be addressed because this will not stand this will not stand smoky this will not stand 
For several reasons, I can't take this out on a test drive. It's not registered or insured, for starters. I just showed you the ball joints. I don't want to drive that out on the street like that. And we've got the transmission problem, but we can start it up and listen to it run. How about that? It's interesting that the brake light isn't on, despite the fact that it's unplugged. That's curious. It runs great though. I mean, listen to that. Sounds smooth and quiet. I think for a time this got regular service. I just noticed this. Guess what that is? That's the intake air temperature sensor. And somebody has tied something into it. So that's probably the reason for our code. I wonder what that's going to. Some kind of something up underneath here. I don't know what it is. That's weird. Anyhow, we'll have to look into that further. But otherwise, sounds good. Let's check the oil and look under the oil cap. I really have no idea of what you would tie into the intake air temperature sensor. No idea what that's about. Okay, oil. Eh, it doesn't look that old. Well, it's low. Looks like it was freshly changed though. Maybe they just shorted it on how much they put in. Let's see what's under the oil cap. It's about normal for this mileage. Let's get a look down in there. Honestly, that's very encouraging. There's not a lot of buildup or gunk. And for 210,000 miles, I'm actually quite pleased with what I'm seeing. Quite pleased. The AC doesn't work. That sucks. A nice little laundry list, like front and back for this thing. We've got what I believe to be a good engine. It looks like that was maintained. No external oil leaks. It doesn't look like it's all gunked up inside. Super happy about that. Super happy it doesn't have VCM. Very confused about what that intake air temperature sensor is tied into. No idea what that is, but that's out of here. Front suspension obviously needs some work. I'm gonna go the extra mile with the front and rear suspension just because eh, it's important to me. And the transmission. So we've got quite a bit of work and AC work. There's, there's a lot of work here that can make for some nice videos uh, in the future, especially for you pilot owners. I'm fairly certain the question is going to come up, Eric, why don't you fix up the pilot and give it away as a fixing it forward vehicle? Well, if you watch those videos that I mentioned earlier about me hating SUVs and also the definition of what an SUV is, I said in both of those videos that if you're in financial duress, an SUV is the last vehicle I think you should get into. Maintenance cost is higher, tire cost is higher, fuel cost is higher, and it's only gonna take a bad financial situation and make it worse in my mind. Therefore, this is not gonna be a fixing it forward vehicle. I bought this with my own money, I plan to do my own thing with it, and then decide what to do with it after that. But in the meantime, I'll be making videos with it. So before we go any further, I just wanted to address that this is not gonna be a fixing it forward vehicle. And this list should be a perfect example. This was already purchased by somebody. New tires were put onto it, yet those ball joints in the front are junk and they would not only ruin the tires but still the vehicle is unsafe because of that and i'm not saying everything on this list needs to be addressed as far as a safety concern but it's certainly a lot of stuff to deal with and once again if you're in a financially strapped situation this is not going to help but as i said i don't really i'm not really into the whole suv thing but that gave me an idea you're looking at an eaton m90 supercharger yep that's right i got this guy off ebay and sadly, it arrived with a slightly broken uh, port there, but apparently it's been rebuilt and it has only 50,000 miles on the rebuild. And there's not, a, you know, there's not a lot of bearing movement or any of that stuff in here. So I tend to believe that. And these rotors also look pretty darn good. They looked better than the ones that were in my Type R. You can see the vision now, can't you? Right? I wanna take it a step further though. I like superchargers, they're cool, but like my Type R, I don't just wanna bolt the supercharger on. I want to get an intercooler to go with it. So I'm on the hunt for an intercooler that will go between this and the intake manifold so that I can help cool the air going in. Many times like up to 100 degrees or more and that is worth more power. Cold air, air is denser, hot air is not. Not to mention you get heat soak with something like this and lose power. I think this will be fun, don't you? This is what I propose. 
I take care of all the mechanical work and everything just like this was a regular Odyssey. Get this thing running tip top, get the transmission replaced, take care of the suspension work, get the AC working again, uh, probably just in time for fall and winter, and uh, then take it to the track and see what it does in the quarter mile in stock form. Then go through, add the supercharger and upgraded fuel system and the intercooler and stuff that I mentioned and see what kind of power we get from there. Now with that M90 supercharger, we can sort of tweak and adjust the boost. I think with the intercooler, I could probably get safely like eight PSI into this thing and be consistent and fun all day long. How much extra power will that add? I'm not sure. If I could find a way to like measure the power output of this before I get there, which I think these Odysseys were rated somewhere around 200-ish horsepower or something like that at the crank. I don't know what that is at the wheels. But anyway, I just think it would be super fun to throw a supercharger on this. I've been in track hawks before and those things are super impressive. So this is where I'm deriving my name from since I'm throwing a supercharger onto this J-Series V6. And it's a Honda. This is now I introduce you to you, the Hack Hawk. Like I said, we'll start off with the normal regular repairs and then we'll move into the upgrade with the supercharger and see what that does. Sound like fun? Awesome. Hey, thank you so much for watching today. I'll put links in the description to additional videos, information, stuff that I mentioned, tools and parts, whatever. Just check the description for additional information. And if you have automotive questions that I didn't cover in this video, ericthecarguy.com is always there for you. Link in the description also. Thank you so much for watching today. Remember, I post videos on Fridays. Come back and watch them. You want to watch them. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. I'll see you next time. Bye. Hack Hawk.